Hello guys, my name is Colin and this is Colin Talks Crypto. In this episode, we're going to cover an exciting new potential innovation coming to the EOS IO software, and that is called DISK, D-I-S-K, a new resource on EOS IO for storing data on solid state drives as opposed to all in memory. So I thought this was pretty exciting and I want to give credit, the full credit for this entire discovery to Corvin Meyer off to Heide. I hope I said his name right because I practiced it like 10 times before I said this. This is potentially pretty cool news, guys. And I want to be clear that this was found in the EOS IO source code repositories. It's being worked on by Block One actively. They're testing it. It looks like it's going to make it into the next release of EOS IO. However, it is not for sure, and anything's possible. This is not like something that Block One has come out with and said that they're going to put out. This is something that Corvin was digging around in the latest commits on the public EOS IO source code repositories, and he found some interesting insights into this potential new resource called DISC for all EOS IO blockchains. So real quick, before we dive into what DISC is, I want to tell you a little bit about Corvin himself. Corvin has been into EOS and EOS IO from the very beginning. He was one of the core developers at Karma. Shout out to Dallas Rushing. He was a mentor at the EOS IO hackathon in London. He helped and advised many different projects with their implementations and made the third place at the DAP network hackathon, as well as being the number one user on EOS IO stackexchange.com last year. He's also the CTO of a known German blockchain company, and his Twitter handle is CMADH underscore. So that's kind of like his credentials. And he just passed this information along to me. I would not have found this without his help. I do not go digging around in the EOSIO public repositories. And so that's something that he took his time and did. Corvin made some finds that indicate a completely new resource called DISC, D-I-S-K, is being added to the protocol itself. And I'll get into some questions later on this. Like I asked him, well, how is this different from VRAM from Liquid Apps? So he goes on to say that based on the commits to the public code repositories, the next update of EOS IO will include the mentioned key value store. The advantages of this are that the creation of indexes, which is the unique identifiers for data sets, costs less storage space, but also these indexes can be any type and size greater than 64 bits. So this is just like nerd speak for telling you that you'll get greater capability of storage for smart contracts and greater versatility for that storage. So it opens up options for DAP creators. And it looks like the storage of this new data type can only be paid by the contract itself. And there's no way to let the user himself pay. So this is definitely catered to DAP developers. Until now, it seemed as if the data in smart contract databases would be stored in RAM. But as seen in the latest commits, it seems like Block One is adding a new resource type called DISC. The intention for DISC is clear. Contracts or companies behind smart contracts pay the resources, which ensures seamless usability for the user. Okay, so let's get into the details. What is DISC? And Corvin goes on to explain here. How does it work and what does it mean for EOS IO chains? So there's some technical stuff here. And he says, smart contract databases typically use level DB, such as Bitcoin, Ethereum, NEO, et cetera. EOS makes a huge difference here while using RAM and in the future, additionally, rocks DB. So we're just talking about database software here, which is storing data in an accessible manner. So this newer fork, RocksDB, is optimized to take use of multi-CPU cores and make efficient use of fast storage, such as solid state drives. As seen in the latest commits, it looks like DISC will be an additional storage resource, which can be used to store data on solid state drives instead of in RAM. And obviously with solid state drives, you can have a much larger storage capacity in the tens or hundreds of terabytes. 
and increasing every year, as opposed to RAM, which typically caps out about 64 or 256 gigabytes per computer due to technical limitations. It's basically, it's a lot easier to add solid state drive storage as opposed to RAM. And so this innovation allows the storage capacity for EOS IO block producers and nodes and databases to increase tremendously. Disk is in contract on-chain storage for computational tasks. It is not distributed file storage for media or similar data. And that was one of my questions as well. I was wondering if this was a replacement for IPFS file storage, interplanetary file storage, storing movies, video, content on the chain. It's not a replacement for that. This is for use by smart contracts to store data for applications. Due to the higher storage supply capacity, disk will be much cheaper than RAM, but it will also be slower and consume more CPU. If block producers of one of the many EOS IO chains decide to add disk, they would need to upgrade and add SSDs to their hardware and server infrastructure. But solid state drives are quite cheap compared to other hardware like RAM or graphics cards, so it shouldn't be too expensive to do. Now as far as use cases for this. Possible use cases are data that only needs to be accessed at longer intervals. For example, posts from a decentralized social network could be moved from RAN to disk after a week since the number of interactions with a post decreases over time. Another example could be inactive players in a game where only 20% of the players are regularly playing and the 80% of inactive players could be moved from RAM to disk after a certain inactive time to save on costs. Another type of use case could be future disk airdrops where the user has to claim the token from disk to RAM if he wants to use it. Or low liquidity tokens would be a reasonable use case as well. Disk is a resource that anyone can buy and own like RAM. In fact, when you buy RAM, you are reserving storage space. Once you do a transaction that consumes RAM, some of the reserved RAM space is then filled. With this new disk storage type, once you do a transaction that consumes space, it's always the contract that is built. So I asked him about how this related to Liquid Apps and VRAM, because VRAM, as I understood it, was a way to drastically reduce the cost of RAM storage and to uh, distribute that amongst DSPs on the Liquid Apps network. And Corvin explained, VRAM is injected storage that's not really on-chain. It's on a second layer. It's pretty slow and much of the computational work is done outside the chain. On the converse, disk runs completely on-chain. The access is directly from within smart contracts and all computational work is done on-chain. So disk will be significantly faster than VRAM and easier to access for developers. And I also asked them how fast is it to access the data stored in disk versus data stored in RAM. And he said that it could be done in a single transaction. Basically the smart contract would read from disk and then write to RAM and you're done. So there we have it guys, an exciting new capability hopefully coming soon to the EOS IO software. As he said, it looks like it's going to be released in an upcoming EOS IO release, but he wants to make very sure, and I want to make very sure also that it's completely understood that this is not 100% for sure yet. Block one has not publicly stated anything about this, but they are testing it and they are actively developing it. So it looks likely, so I want to make that very clear. All right, guys, if you have any comments or questions, please put them in the comment section below. Please like, share, and subscribe. And as always, have a great day. And thank you very much to Corvin for his insight into this new EOS IO technology called DISC that none of us, I think, have been aware of. Have a great day.